Hello everyone, welcome back to the Black Hole Project. This is the second video of a series and it is entirely dedicated to fixing things. There are currently two big issues with the shader. If we move our camera far away from the black hole, at some point the shader completely breaks down. Secondly, if you rotate the camera and look away from the black hole, you see a second black hole? Yeah, this is also a problem. Looking away from the black hole is treated the same as looking towards it. So there appears to be a second black hole opposite from the actual black hole with the camera in the middle. We can fix both of these problems by using a different choice of axes for our texture. Instead of using R and B, we can use R and the view angle, which is the angle between the direction of the light ray at the camera position and the vector from the black hole to the camera. We can do this because of these three variables, r, b, and the view angle, any can be expressed as a function of the other two. I encourage you to pause the video for a second and convince yourself that this is the case, because we're going to use it multiple times in the future. Looking at our texture on the right here, the left half is looking at the black hole, and the right half is looking away from the black hole. Since the view angle can be between 0 and 180 degrees, the separation between looking at the black hole and looking away from it is at a view angle of 90 degrees. The way we calculate the texture is a little different then. We cannot simply create an array of values for B and R, because we don't know B. We know the view angle. So for every combination of R and the view angle, we first need to calculate B. Luckily we have an expression for B. It's the absolute value of L over E, where L and E are these things. These expressions do not contain the view angle though, but u r and u phi we can calculate from the view angle like this. And we need to remember to divide by r here, as we discussed in the previous video. So putting this in code looks like this. We loop through all rows, and for each row we have a value of r. The first and the last row will need special care, so we loop through all other rows and leave the first and the last one to be done afterwards. Then for each of those rows, we loop through all view angles. We'll need to handle looking away from the black hole slightly differently. So again, let's focus on what we already know how to do, which is the rays that are pointing towards the black hole, and think about the rest later. So we loop through all rays pointing towards the black hole, which is the first half of the x-axis. On to the actual calculations. We first calculate u r and u phi, and from those we calculate b using a function that implements these equations. Then we need to check whether b is smaller than the square root of 27. And again we're using 5.1962, which is ever so slightly higher than the square root of 27, to stay away from infinite deflection angles. Because the view angle can go down to zero, we have a bunch of pixels in our texture that correspond to a ray falling into the black hole. Since in our shader all rays that fall into the black hole will just be black, it doesn't really matter what the value is in these pixels of our texture. But like we discussed in the previous video, we want to avoid discontinuities in our texture, so what we'll do with rays falling into the black hole is to not just ignore them. Instead we'll set b equal to 5.1962 and calculate the deflection angle using that value instead of the actual value of b. This will make sure that interpolation behaves nicely at the edge of our black hole. From here, we can do what we did in the previous version. We calculate delta phi and alpha, and save the value in our 2D array. In one area of the texture, I kept running into numerical errors, where this calculate alpha function returned a value that was pi radians too small. Instead of spending hours fixing the problem, I decided to be lazy and just check if the value of alpha is too small, and add by if necessary. I know this is a really bad idea, but at this point I had already spent a few hours tracking down the problem, and I just wanted to get my texture working. In any case, that's it for rays going towards the black hole, except for some edge cases. Let's take a look at rays going away from the black hole. We need to think about what the deflection angle is for a light ray that moves away from the black hole. Let's first think about what it means for a light ray to go away from the black hole. We defined going away from the black hole as having a view angle of more than 90 degrees. This is a very intuitive choice of a definition, but there's actually something special about a ray with a 90 degree view angle, 
which leads to a fundamental distinction between rays going towards or away from the black hole. A 90 degree view angle means the ray goes perpendicular to the direction to the black hole at the camera position. There's only one point along a light ray orbit where the ray goes perpendicular to the direction to the black hole. The turning point. Well, except for rays that fall into the black hole, or the case of b equal to the square root of 27, those orbits do not have a turning point. Regardless, this is a very useful way of thinking about the difference between rays going towards or away from the black hole. For rays going towards the black hole, the camera position on the orbit is before the turning point, whereas for rays going away from the black hole, the camera position on the orbit is after the turning point. As I said, it's good to keep this in mind, but we don't really need this fact to determine the deflection angle for rays going away from the black hole. Let's bring up a schematic from my second video. This shows a light ray with the camera at a certain position, looking left. We then determine the deflection angle to be delta phi def minus alpha. Now picture the camera looking right. The deflection angle of this light ray in the other direction is actually just alpha. Even for light rays with b less than the square root of 27, this works perfectly. So we don't have to calculate anything new for light rays going away from the black hole. That's nice. Let's take a look at the codes. We can start by doing the same thing as for rays going towards the black hole, calculating ur, u phi, and b. Then we can just calculate alpha and save it in the 2D array. There was one problem though. For rays with small b, I again run into a lot of numerical instabilities. It seems that something in calculate alpha becomes unstable for values of b smaller than the square root of 27. It turns out that if you define these dy dx and integral as functions of r instead of w, it is stable for small values of b. However, using r instead of w then turned out to be unstable for large values of b. Calculating alpha seemed to be one big minefield of numerical instabilities. Continuing my trend of ignoring my problems, I just decided to use the r versions for b smaller than 5.1962 and the W versions for Bs larger than 5.1962. No more numerical instabilities. Okay, we're nearly done. There are just two edge cases we need to think about. R equal to 3m and infinite R. Infinite R is easy, the deflection angle is zero everywhere. For R equal to 3m, any ray going towards the black hole will fall into it. So we'll do something similar to what we did for all the other rays that fall into the black hole. We search for the first ray that didn't fall into the black hole and set the deflection angle of all the rays that do to the deflection angle of that ray. And we're done, finally. All that is left to do is to save the texture, which is the exact same as before. I did change the name of the texture though. I wasn't quite ready to throw away the old texture and later on it turned out to have a use after all. Let's take a look at how to implement this in the shader. Let's start with the deflection angle subgraph. So we need a new input parameter for the view angle. And then we simply divide this view angle by pi to get the u coordinates. Then where we cut out the black hole, we only want to do this when we're looking at the black hole. So we'll check whether the view angle is more than pi over 2. And output true if either one of these two are true. And don't forget to swap out our old texture with our new one. In our main shader, we then need to pass the view angle to the subgraph. To get the view angle, we can take the dot product of the r vector with the view vector. That gives us the cosine of the view angle, so we need to take the arc cosine and then pass it to deflection angle. Now we can look away from the black hole, but we created a new problem. If we go close to the black hole, there is some jittering near the edge here. This is because we miss out on the high resolution for small values of b of our old texture. There probably exists some fancy packing method that would allow for looking away from the black hole and keep sufficient resolution for small values of b. And this would probably also be solved by making a larger texture, but I am lazy and we can also just use our old texture again. We can use a texture with r and b for rays with small b and transition to the new texture with r and the view angle for rays with large b. 
I used a combination of B and the view angle to create a mask that looks like this, and use that to transition from one texture to the other. The final result looks like this. We can look away from the black hole, there is no jittering anywhere, and we have the crispy detail close to the black hole. In playing around with the results, I discovered something that looks super cool. We can move the camera onto the y-axis, and then move it down to y equal to 3m. Now we have a kind of horizon, below which everything is black, but the light is bent in such a way that we can see every point on the skybox, even the part of the environment that is directly behind the black hole from where we are. So if that's something cool that wasn't possible with the previous implementation, the only thing that isn't possible yet is moving the camera closer than 3M to the black hole. It's definitely possible to do, at least down to 2M, but I'm not planning to do it here because it would mess with what I want to do in the next videos. And trust me, there's really no need to make the next video more complicated. That's it for this video, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.